What is up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dap Central. I'm your host here, Fareed. As a part of today's video, we're going to be talking about a highly anticipated Cardano stablecoin, which is aiming to launch towards the end of Q1 of 2024. That's going to be none other than USDM provided by Mahen. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. This team just released their January development update. And I want to touch on everything that's going on, given the fact that they recently did have a delay. They were supposed to launch early or excuse me, mid of December. Specifically, it was December 19th. Now, unfortunately, due to some of the findings as a part of their audit with the Sunday swap team, the team has chosen to take their time, implement upgrades, which I want to jump into as a part of today's video in order to make sure that they are future proof after they release on Cardano. So I'll go ahead and leave the link to this particular report down below, but we're going to break down some of the key highlights. And as always, if you do find this particular type of content to be helpful, I would really appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up or that like button. If it's your first time stopping by Dapp Central and you want more content like this, breaking down the biggest builders on Cardano, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions or comments about Mahen or any other Cardano specific builders, then make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. So. This is going to be touching on the USDM delay and why it is important for Cardano's future. In terms of the TLDR and probably the biggest piece of news, which is going to be the updated release date, it states here, we chose a delay based on audit recommendations from Sunday Labs. Now they're estimating that their new target launch date will be set for March 16th of 2024 so about three months out from the time that i'm currently shooting this video which is not too long again given some of the upgrades you're going to be making which i want to touch on as a part of today's video so it states on stage at the recent cardano summit which took place in dubai for 2023 mahen announced that the usdm fiat back stablecoin will be coming to the mainnet on december 19th during their december 7th team meeting it became apparent that they would not be able to make that deadline and so the following day they released an update stating that for security reasons they would not be launching on the expected date now jumping down a little bit further into the actual overview of how the mahen protocol is going to work there's a few things architecturally that i want to jump into so it states the architecture of the Mahan protocol seems simple, but the implementation is intricate and purposeful. The token's monetary policy is designed to do three separate things. Number one, to note how much of the token is in circulation on chain without using a blockchain snapshot. So blockchain snapshot would essentially happen once per epoch. That's typically how it works or multiple times per epoch, but it wouldn't necessarily give them a fluid view as to the supply and demand as it's happening or changing in real time. So for them to be able to figure out exactly how much is circulating on chain without having a snapshot that's taken every five days will be critical to number one, confirming the actual amount of the USDM token that's minted on chain, but the number two to verify that against what they're supposed to have in the reserves. Now, moving along, it's also aiming to know exactly how much is in the reserve account by the way of an Oracle feed. If you guys missed this particular update, the Mahen team did integrate with Charlie three. They're going to be Cardano's Oracle right now. And they confirmed, or at least were able to confirm utilizing Charlie three, how much of the actual fiat within the bank that they're going to be partnering with is going to be available. Now, depending on what value the C3 protocol gives back to Mahen, they'll be able to dictate how much more USDM they're available to mint on the Cardano network. Number three, this current architecture is meant to prevent any minting that brings the circulation above the Oracle value. So three key things there, again, being able to quickly identify how much is on chain without having to take a snapshot. Number two, to be to be able to verify what's in the reserves and the number three to verify that they're not over minting given how much is in the reserves. Now, Charlie three was chosen as the Oracle of choice. Again, they're going to be trusted to provide reliable data about the fiat reserves backing USDM. From the beginning, the Mahan protocol and by extension USDM included what we term as transparent flexibility. This is where the recent findings of the audit with the Sunday swap team comes in. 
Now, the issuer of the token, in this case, Mahen, as the controller of USDM, must have the ability to change parts of the protocol, such as the reserves oracle. So if they want to maybe move away from C3 or if they want to maybe go with an aggregate or multiple sources, they need to be able to integrate and change those oracles on the fly. Now, they need to do all of that without changing the policy ID of the token. We've seen multiple assets upgrade their tokens, which basically forces them to create a brand new token policy that tends to introduce a lot of confusion within the community. But it also um, forces for the protocol, right, to basically do away with the old token and then reintegrate on DEXs, different platforms. And again, just kind of reintroduce that new token to their entire community. So it is a hassle whenever a protocol has to change their policy ID or decides to um, upgrade, therefore forcing their hand to change that policy ID. So potential design gaps, this is what was found in the actual audit. The audit of USDM's design by Sunday Swap Labs was a critical juncture in their journey. It brought to light several design gaps that if unaddressed could have significant implications for the stability and reliability of USDM within Cardano's DeFi ecosystem. I recently released a poll on my YouTube channel asking if we needed something like USDC or USDT on Cardano. Now, I also broke down some of the pros and cons of something like USDT and USDC. As a part of that poll, 83% of the community or about 83% of the community said that we did need something like that. And the remainder, right, was really adamant about utilizing something that's homegrown, for example, like Mahen or USDM or USDA coming in from the Emergo team. With something like USDM, we're not going to have any of the cons, for example, the blacklisting or the freezing of assets um, within Cardano, which I think is key to decentralization, permissionlessness, as well as transparency. So I wanted to quickly highlight that there. Now, with something like USDM, it's really interesting to see that they're going to be minting, and I believe it's going to be 13 states initially, right? But once they actually do start minting, I'm going to be looking to see exactly how much liquidity comes in. That seems to be the point of contention with the recent discussions between something that's homegrown like Mahen or USDM and something like USDT or USDC. USDC boasts right now over $28 billion worth of liquidity. I would definitely not expect that amount of liquidity to come in initially from something like Mahen, but as it matures over the couple of next years, right? And as Cardano matures and there's more adoption, I would hope to at least get to figures around, you know, a billion, two billion, and then potentially, you know, in a couple of years down the road, even getting as big as USDC. So jumping back over in terms of the findings, there were two key findings that the team is looking to fix. Number one is going to be what they refer to as the latency of their watchdog mechanism. So the Sunday swap team highlighted concerns about the latency in updating the watchdog mechanisms in place to keep the protocol honest, particularly the ability of the protocol owner or the Mahen team to rapidly change the Oracle and potentially manipulate um, the market, which basically raised some red flags. What this basically means is that if there's no timeline between when the Mahen team makes an upgrade to the platform and when it's actually implemented, they could theoretically make updates and then swap them back with a latency period that would basically force um, people or the community that would give them time to be able to quickly pick up what change is going to be implemented, potentially stopping it before it's actually implemented. So this is basically to make sure that the team is kept honest, not saying that they aren't going to be honest, but you want to make sure to have all these mechanisms in place. Now, the next piece is going to be surrounding the up upgrade ability of the token. So as I mentioned earlier, what we've seen in the past are projects upgrading to V2, therefore causing fragmentation of liquidity, as well as confusion with whatever current version of the protocol or whatever cur current version of the token is the correct policy ID. So the Sunday swap team critically noted that if the team needed to make any upgrades to the token itself, that it would actually change the policy ID. Again, this would cross fragmentation of liquidity and much difficulty for their integration partners due to the need for new policy IDs. Again, keep in mind that if they're looking to be adopted, they have to be integrated in different DEXs, different DeFi protocols, and that would basically force all these different platforms that they're integrated into to actually have to upgrade. Also, anybody who's holding, you know, the v1 or the initial policy of the man token would basically have to turn that in or swap that or upgrade that over to the new policy 
So it's important to emphasize that that piece there is going to be what the team is focusing on. Number one, adding the latency mechanisms for the watchdog uh, mechanism or the watchdog system. And then number two, making sure that their token is upgradable in the future without them actually having to upgrade their policy. So it's important to emphasize that none of these vulnerabilities were external security threats. I want to be clear about that as well. It's not like they found issues with people being able to maliciously exploit their current contracts. These are all things to make sure that the team itself is kept honest and that they can, again, upgrade the token without having to make overarching or overarching changes that impact the entire community. So these vulnerabilities were real, but they are manageable. So the team had two paths. One was to launch on time with their quote unquote internal vulnerabilities and address them with USDM v2 later. I am not a fan of that particular approach. Again, I think that causes some headaches and it just opens up the team to potentially more FUD down the line when they have to make these upgrades anyway. So I think it makes sense for them to take their time, roll out one good time and make sure to um, apply all of the upgraded functions in order to roll out a smooth way and in order to not have to double back on anything and release an additional token. The second option would have been to take the delay, which they are taking that, and to make the correct token design changes and address everything right now. So in terms of what they've already done, in response to the identified risk of the rapid unauthorized changes or the watchdog latency mechanism, they've integrated a multi-sig control and time delay mechanism. So the multi-sig will make basically make sure that there are multiple wallets that have to sign off before an upgrade can be made. And as long as those wallets that are included in the multi-sig provide the majority vote in favor of making those upgrades, those will then take effect. Now, keep in mind that they're not going to take effect immediately because of the time delay mechanism that they've now also implemented. Number two, to fix the upgradability. Based on the Sunday Swap team's guidance, they are future proofing USDM by providing a mutable and upgradable element to the actual token. Now, this is going to allow for them to make changes to the token on chain controls or to the tokens on chain controls without having to change the policy ID. This is a huge piece right here. Again, with Plutus V1 now getting upgraded to Plutus V2, potentially Plutus V3, V4. You know, we don't know how many upgrades are going to be in the future. They want to make sure that their future proof is possible to be able to make those upgrades and take advantage of them in real time without having to, again, deploy a brand new token or brand new policy ID. In closing, this future proofs the USDM token, ensuring that USDM will be a maximally fungible token within Cardano or within the blockchain and DeFi ecosystem. Um, the very last thing I want to talk about is just the importance of the delay. So it states the decision for the delay or to delay USDM was not easy, but it was the correct choice and it carried profound implications for the future of Cardano's DeFi ecosystem. In the race to launch and meet these deadlines, a priority for robust security cannot be overstated. The mantra to move fast and break things might suit Web2, but in an immutable world in Web3, deploying protocol correctly or deploying protocols correctly is paramount. I couldn't agree more. I would much rather, rather them do this right the first time as opposed to trying to rush and break things and then potentially put users liquidity at risk. Also, why risking um, the community's confidence in the actual protocol itself. Ultimately, their choice to delay USDM is driven by Mahen's vision as a community first effort. They are committed to delivering high quality, secure and sustainable products that serve the community. To also just kind of back that up, if you guys missed this particular update, they recently moved over to Chainraise, which is a platform that enables equity tokenization. So if you want to basically own a portion, right, or invest in the actual Mahen protocol, you can do that utilizing Chainraise. They were previously using something that was called WeFunder. They've now moved that over into Chainraise. And if you did provide liquidity as a part of WeFunder, you should now have gotten a refund. If you have not, join their Discord, open up a ticket, and you should be able to get all the help and all the answers that you need. So that will do it here for today's video. Let me know what you guys think. Is this a well-worthy reason to, to delay the protocol launch by about three months? I definitely think so. If they don't do this stuff now and if they don't get to these issues now, inevitably, they will pop up in the future. So it's much better that they do this now while there aren't any tokens minted. This also gives them time to double check everything with Charlie 3, their banking provider, and potentially even getting access to roll out in more states 
in preparation of the launch on March 16th. If you found today's video to be helpful or insightful, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by DAP Central and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me surrounding Mahen or Cardano, then make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.